So when we got the generator for my dad, we got this with it. This is the other fuel tank that he gave us with it. Unfortunately, um, I can't really find a good place to put it in here that's not going to cause some problem. So this came with the uh, diesel heaters. We have two of them. And we didn't use them because we tapped into the fuel tank. Right. So we have these two things up for grabs. Right. So um, one of the things that this fuel tank here does that is important is that it has a, um, a pressure relief. So you have to open this in order for this to work because this sucks gas out of this and as the gas gas goes down in here it's allowing air in for it to go down and then you'd have to shut this off before we went driving this one on the other end has this little valve here which is interesting if i can get it out of here um, it allows the air to go through this little hole right here but doesn't allow to go back out this thing prevents the fuel from sloshing up and out so it just allows air in and then it self seals so it's kind of a uh, neat little thing to prevent it from falling the second thing is i can mount this so that the bottom of this is lower than the, the generator the generator so that it doesn't spill out this is the fuel i have to drill a hole in here feed this into that hole somehow I'm looking down there going, uh, <laughs> get this mounted and then put this screw on it to, with another little O-ring here and tighten it down so that it prevents this thing from leaking. And then this will stick out the bottom. The other option is to do it from the top with the other, uh, that other stick that goes down that we have right that came with the diesel so let's heaters. get that the other option is to put this on here inside and then but it has this lip on it i don't know how well it's going to work might work yeah so here's the thing so let's pretend this is the generator right here if this is higher than the generator then this amount of fuel above the generator is going to try to go into the generator no matter what oh i see so, what you're saying so it can't be higher than that yeah so we really want it to be like that oh and they're about the same height that's convenient right that's why I like it. Is that sawdust all over the Yeah. Chair? It's supposed to screw on here. Somehow. Like, <laughs> I guess you're supposed to hold this and go around in a circle a lot of times. <laughs> so, oh, that's kind of a bummer. And this is supposed to twist. It says it does. Probably to accommodate this. So we need to build a rack for that accommodates the this generator and the and this possibly tank. like this oh or like this one or the other either one will fit it looks like um, but also the platform needs to be big enough to reach the appropriate um, the mounting so let's go look at that so this side's obvious it's going to mount here on top of this but then the other part has to mount on that thing right there one there and it needs to be long enough so i can mount one over there okay this is three and a half inch lower than this so we have to have something that brings it up and then uh so it keeps it level and then bolt 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 and then the generator can sit here perfectly that's the plan and then either have the gas the gas tank looks like it fit here the best okay so then it does seem like the best idea for this so that it doesn't try to siphon itself in is to use the top down uh spigot spout 
the way this is designed right here is if you drill a hole as wide as, um, well, you can see it on this right here. On the edge, you can see that little ridge right there. So if you drill a hole as big as that, then you can set this in there and just basically kind of, and it'll go in the hole. So you can go down from the top, get that in, pull it up, and then put these on to waterproof the whole thing. That's most likely what we're gonna have to do here. We have two tanks, so if I destroy one in the process, we can try again and go the other route, which is the spigot from the bottom. Just don't know which one I like better. It just seems to me the one from the top is the best idea. Only because the one on the bottom creates a pressure that could potentially cause gas pressure into the Honda generator versus this thing here where gravity is working in our favor yeah. and that thing has to suck the gas out Wouldn't and it's it not trying to force it into yeah. the, the thing. Just like that. Very nice. Perfect, it's absolutely perfect, okay. That's it. Okay, so <clears throat> the fuel tank will be like that, a little bit closer. I think this is gonna work. Yay! Looks like a pretty good plan here. I'm excited about this one. And this is an actual fuel tank, so it's designed to carry fuel, so that's positive too. Right? Bonus! Right, okay. Nice way to be able to reuse our what would you call them? Resources. Yeah. So you can see this thing laid out here on the floor and ultimately this is what the generator is going to sit on. And then we'll run like a, a ratchet strap over the top of it and a chain or something to keep you from stealing it. So I have 10 inches wide over here. Let's see how the generator fits in here. Okay. So it'll be like this right here. Okay. Then we just gotta build something on the back side right there yeah. to allow our fuel tank to go in. We'll make it 10 inches wide by 20 inches. All right, 10 and a quarter by 20 it is. No, not like this, like this. <laughs> That's not right either. No? Yeah. I have to cut it like that. Brace yeah. it like that or not. What do we have for that? Block of wood the right size? That was a good idea, baby. Thanks. Now we gotta make a thing that comes down there and a thing that comes down here. And uh, make sure they're in the right position. Yeah, so they gotta be level. I like that definitive finish, like you, you're through. Yeah. It's like polishing the edges. <laughs> Wowie. Ooh, I almost blew my brains out. So I look at my reflection instead. Oh, that's nice. That is really nice. What Perfect do you think? fit. Boy, it sure is good. That's nice. Perfect fit, first try. Yeah. I was so happy to find this little spot, but 
even more so that it's gonna work. Ow. Are you kidding me? It's beautiful. Are you kidding me? Let's turn it on. Then we can go inside and see how it sounds. Okay. Sometimes they have a bowl, but I can't remember. I haven't started this. to just stay in the stairwell though it's too muddy yeah it's not bad i can feel the vibration in my feet down here i can't do pretty cool place for a jenny though yeah excellent. can't believe it fit in there excellent first test yeah so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take this down i might do it myself but we're, they, they make an attachment we can weld on a one inch nipple on here and then we can uh, extend the uh, exhaust down and out so it's not filling up this here and potentially going inside though most likely it's not considering they built this for children and they don't want this leaking air into the inside but just in case that's why but once this is in and mounted and uh, and chained on there like all you, or you just come out here and start it it's super and easy good to go yeah but then we're gonna have the external fuel tank right here let's see if it fits Ooh. so we still have to build the mount for that though but ta-da perfect fit right there i like when we do projects like this because they're it's it's overcoming a problem that we had and then you know obviously this thing was never oh sorry was never designed to have a jenny right there but then here we are putting a jenny right there and that's cool man really cool so, the idea of what we're trying to do here is to make something that comes out the bottom of this, like this, over here, and holds this in place. And then comes up this way, and comes up and interfaces. You can see the, the divots for the holes right here. Well, there's three holes, you can see. And we want to interface with those so that we can uh, protect this thing so it doesn't move. So the best thing we could do is to uh, create a really strong place for this to mount. So what do we use for that? What do we have for that? So something like that. that little extension up there might as well since we're here it's so cool how that fits yeah look at that here put this in first yeah I see metal through all the holes Our sweet little redhead Jenny. Let's see if this closes. There it is. That is pretty cool. I think we did all right. There's Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I gotta turn the spout around. But uh, other than that and paint, we're done. This thing turned out super good. Look how cute it is. <laughs> I like how nicely protected it is in this engine compartment. Yeah. Like that, that gas tank's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good build. So what have you been up to out here? I'm doing lots of things. <laughs> Mad so, scientist-y things? Yes, let's go look over here first. Yeah, show me what you've done. Okay. 
So there's two things I'm doing. One is this thing over here I just painted, which is just basically an angle iron or angle metal. And that's gonna go right in here. And it's gonna be on this side. The fuel tank will then sit there. So if a rock glances up, that it would hit the sheet metal and not puncture a hole in our gas tank, one. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend the second piece of metal I have to go over this through here. And it's gonna serve two purposes. One is to uh, a heat shield, though I really don't feel that's gonna be a problem, but it is going to um, create a, a layer of protection for heat. But the second thing is if there was a leak for some reason that the fuel would go down and drip onto that heat shield and off onto the sides and not directly onto this, not causing a fire. So, so these are just like totally precautionary measures yes. on the offhand chance something bizarre happens. I honestly feel I don't need to do this, You're but I'm doing, doing it as an extra precaution. I really don't case. feel we're going to have a problem with this. And taking into consideration that that container was designed to hold fuel. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not going to be an easily meltable plastic. Yeah, it was designed to hold diesel fuel and it'll hold gas just as well. I just don't have any fears about something going wrong with this. Like it's, the design is solid. Seems like a solid plan, you're yeah. right. So this is the thing you guys have probably only seen it with the wood in. So this is the, the finished product. You can see how it ha it bolts down in one, two, three, four, oh, five. Oh, you drilled the holes? Yeah, it bolts down in five different places. So, so the holes are drilled, all you have to do is put bolts in now? Yes. Gotcha. And that comes after I put the black on this thing, which is going to happen really soon. This rest stop paint here dries really quick. So it's going to allow us to move forward quicker, I think. Good. And I think I'm going to use some of those little foam pads down here before I put the wood down. So the wood isn't just beating on this. The stuff you used on the, your on your mosaics. I used felt. That's what I mean, felt. It's kind of a fun project. Yeah. You have a little paint shop set up over here. Yeah, I needed it. This is nice. This tip is nice because it has a, a fan tip on it. Do they just come like that now? Some of them, yeah. This one does. <laughs> it looks good. I'll paint it up. Here he does. All right, let's put some bolts in here. I can't believe we finally are bolting this thing in. Like, it's really exciting for me to get this far. Yeah, the end of a project is always a lot more fun than the beginning of a project. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> Kitty cat paw prints I see up there. I wonder who's been in here. There. So we're just putting these on to prevent any real um, scuffing of the paint. Yeah, over time. Yeah. This will help prevent that. Oh, look, Mama Kitty, there's a little platform for you now. That's is your new owner. Just like that. There it is. That's one. Okay. That's good. Do. Yep. Okay. So. When you first turn on the generator, you have to open this to an open position and it vents the tank, meaning there's suction that's created with the tank. And if you close that, um, there'll be a sort of a vapor lock that won't allow fuel to eventually go into the thing and it'll shut itself off. Enter this thing. With this, 
here. This screws onto here. Oops, sorry. And because there's a suction created, can suck from another tank. So the downside of what we're doing here is plain and simple. I don't have any kind of uh, quick disconnect, nor do I have any kind of um, something that allows a, uh, the fuel line to twist on itself. So I have to disconnect it from the other tank just to tighten that thing on there. Something we're just going to have to deal with, i.e. when we have to, if we use more gas that's in this tank right here, then it'll start using the gas in this tank. And in order for me to really fill this thing back up again, I would have to take this off, which means I will have to take this off right here that I'm going to cut to there to fit this right here. Okay. How much gas did we get? We got a little less than a quarter tank. So this is gonna be a neat test because we have to start the Jenny and let it run. And boy, I don't know how long, how long we have to let it run for. That's what I was gonna ask. A long time. I guess we'll be able to see if waters or gas is draining out of this ultimately is the test that we're looking for. Should make a mark on the tank or something. You need to get some kind of assurances that this thing is sucking fuel like it's supposed to. The only way to do that is to put a piece of clear fuel line on this. Turn on again. So this is the big test. And as you can see, it's moving really slowly. But that's the gas. It's being sucked out of this right here. Through here is a bubble. And then it's about to crest the top of this hill and pour into the gas tank. So, back when I started doing this, I was looking for different ways to uh, make an uh, extended exhaust. So I went online and they actually sell these kits you can buy, they're like $60 and it has this a nipple that you can put on the end of this, but you still have to take it to a muffler shop. Well, I just happened to know a welder and he braised that on for me. and. I won't mention his name because he wasn't proud of his weld, Evan. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, no, I really appreciate what he did. He welded, he brazed this on for me and it's solid. So uh, the whole deal behind this is that I just didn't feel comfortable with the exhaust just blowing into the, uh, into the engine compartment here and I really wanted to extend it out. And so we uh, had this and I'll show you guys in a second after I tighten this on. So we're going to use some of the stuff again from the um, diesel heater. Diesel heater. Those things have come in so handy. Yeah, they really have. We're using all the spare parts out of those boxes for different projects. Okay. So now, can we take this little tube right here and? Or do you need a pipe? What are those? Pipe clamp? Yeah, hose clamp. Yeah, I forgot one. Um, sure there's one in the heater box. Cool thing is it just threads on. 
<laughs> that's oh it does that's crazy that it just threaded right on there and yeah it's it even like, yeah it's perfectly threaded that's awesome that's exactly the right size yeah so we can we can uh we can feel safer knowing that we're not going to get uh some kind of carbon monoxide poisoning if it was seeping. I can't imagine an engine compartment seeping that much air. Into a school bus filled with where, children? Yeah, mm -mm. like it doesn't even make I sense. I can't either. This is just satisfying your own weird little mind. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we're not.